I that, that might have been me. I might have just because just <laughs> I might have started that, started that rumor. Um, but Stephen Gerrard, no, sorry, not Stephen Gerrard. Charlie Mongrel, I think we we went to we went to the game with Martin, who writes for the Select Martin Freel, uh, and he he said that we should curse the person who uses the phrase, who brought the phrase quarterback in, and it's true because every time Charlie Mongrel. Every single pass has to be a, I hate this phrase, it's ridiculous, but Hollywood pass. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I, he can't, he does the simple things terribly and he tries to do the, you know, outlandish stuff as well and it just it just doesn't work. I think with Mulgrew, in the SPL, he wouldn't do too badly at centre-half a lot of the time, especially games at home where we've got a lot of time in the ball because... The biggest problem he's got in midfield is he's pressured, and when he's, pr- he's pressured, he loses the ball. If he was further Matterbor. back... Oof, Jesus. Exactly. If he's further back, we're playing against a team that's camping in, he's got a lot more time on the ball, and bringing the ball out of defence, I can see why sometimes he's a good player, because technically Mulgrew isn't a bad player. You know, he's not, he's not the worst, he's not great, but his biggest problem is... He needs a lot of time in the ball to do something with it. And the minute you pressure him, he falls to pieces and he loses the, he loses the ball in key positions. That's why he'll never, ever, for me, be a success sitting in front of the defence. SPL, as I say, SPL level, centre-half, back up. I'm, 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 I would be happy enough with him there, but he ain't ever going to make that. That position, he's never going to be dominant, and I don't think I don't think he should be playing there at all. Uh Great stuff, guys. Uh, I've got another question here in terms of Diara. Um, hope over fear at JS Patterson on Twitter. Get following. Uh, if the reports of Lasana Diara signing short-term deal with Celtic are true, what are your thoughts on his addition? Well, we've, we've kind of covered that. Um, there's a, a Brian Murray, he asks his... Thanks for the, the question, by the way, um, JS Patterson. Brian Murray asks, if we sign Guidetti... Oh, that's another factor. Are we going to sign Guidetti? If we sign Guidetti and get Diara in, and Dyla has an idea of who he likes, who you think we are saying goodbye to in January, and he's put hashtag Effie. Uh, that's actually kind of leading up to the, the the point I was going to make about Mulgrew. To me, Mulgrew, one of Mulgrew's downfalls, I think. Now, this is, this is maybe a personal thing. I don't know about you guys. But to me, Mulgrew seems quite full of himself. I think Charlie Mulgrew's got a, quite an ego on him. Um, again, this is just me, you know, reading between the lines in a lot of ways. Um, do you think if, let's just say, well, I'll give you a scenario, Diara comes in and he starts next week. Let's just say we sign him, we sign him tomorrow, we sign him on the Tuesday, and he's right into the squad because he's match fit and everything, right? Or he, he just puts him in the squad for the sake of it. Charlie Mulgrew isn't on the, in the team. Do you think he wants to go in January? Mulgrew does. Do you think Mulgrew will say that you know he's not playing, so he wants to go in January? Because I think Mulgrew has uh, an illusions of grandeur in terms of this Celtic team and what what, he, what his role should be in it. And I think that if he's not playing, he will dena- demand a transfer out. So that that kind of brings that quick into that question. On you go, Kim. Because they will carry on the boat, if you want. Well, that's you know that's all, the, the obvious answer. Is that what we're sending all our dross now <laughs> out of Bolton. <laughs> Oh, Neil, Neil, can you sign up the following players? Commons, Mulgrew, Effie, we get any more? Stokes. Stokes. Zaluska. Uh, Zaluska. Um, aye, that'll do. That'll do. Uh, out. But no, see, see, with that though, like, uh, do, do you think, do you, am I just, am I just... I, I know what you mean, I know what you mean, he does seem, I think it's the way he runs like Stephen Gerrard, do you know that whole, well, uh, you think you're running like a real qual- quality midfielder? That delusions of grandeur. I can see why that might be the case. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I think. Well, when he came back to Celtic, I think he thought, you know, he's, you know, he couldn't believe that he had got back to the club. You know, obviously since he left the last time. So I don't know if he had been in a hurry to leave, especially with the fact Dial has not exactly cemented his place as manager just now. You know, yeah, he, things are improving. Don't get me wrong for him, and there's less talk amongst the press and Celtic fans of him going. But I don't know if he'd be quick to go. I think he'd probably wait it out. But perhaps eventually you might be right. Maybe forced out. Um, possibly. But I, d- I don't know if he'd be in a hurry to leave Celtic because I think he knows that it's a great club to be at. You know. Yeah. I think it comes well from the whole confidence and faith that Lane had in Mulgrew and the fact that he he would actually almost move was, people around for him to play. He was the first in the team sheet all the time. Um, under and, and playing in different positions. 
just so that he was on the he was, he was out there. Yeah, how many how many times was Joe Ledley? See, that's the thing about Joe Ledley. How many times was Joe Ledley bumped out to the left to to accommodate Mulgrew? If Joe Ledley was played in his right position every week for Celtic when it when he first came in, we would have got a lot more out of him. I think personally. And does that make, make sense when you say that the whole Mulgrew can open like you say a can of beans with his left foot? Should he not be out in the left wing then, where they can whip in fantastic balls and fantastic crosses and through balls from the left? Would it create more chances? Yeah. I mean, you, you talked about Gaudetti's free kicks. When was the last time Duck Mulgrew did anything in terms of an assist from a cross or a set piece? I, I off the, Honestly, off the top of my head, I can't think of one. Whereas about two seasons ago, he was getting them on a weekly basis. You know what I mean? He was His, his delivery was incredible. He was hitting free kicks and it was at least hitting them on target. This mm. is the thing about Stokes and Mulgrew. They should just, just shouldn't take any more free kicks. Well, Groves, Stokes as well. Stokes is delivery from the corner. He kind of whips them in, kind of low, you know, just and then invariably hit the first defender. I don't. I, I, we've not had real consistent quality delivery for a couple of years since Mulgrew was doing it, and it's just kind of gone. There, there isn't. There's nothing. You know, there isn't a quality set piece specialist in terms of delivery. Yeah, we, we don't have that just now. Um, obviously. Guidetti's free kicks. Um, what's that? Three he's got for us. Uh, Thistle, Thistle one and two on Saturday. Yeah. So obviously we've got that sorted. It's like a penalty now when we get a free oh, kick for him. Don't you worry about that. Um, but I, the, 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 in terms of delivery, that was the one thing that Mulgrew was always renowned for, and it's not there. So it's funny that your bags check. People <laughs> check. People still say it though. Oh, he's got great delivery though. No, he doesn't. He had great delivery. Uh, another question Will Castle This is from By Murray again Will Castle Lustig partnership Was exciting On Saturday Adding this To the Stokes As a Geary combination Is this the way forward For Dyla Kieran Well we've kind of Touched on Lustig What were your thoughts On Will Castle um, He's kind of Starting to kind of Go on the game uh, On the game now um, Again his final ball Isn't very good I can't remember. There was maybe a lot of link-up play with Lustig, but again, it's the same with Stokes and, and Izzy. They actually they actually get on quite a good kind of wavelength, and they're getting a good kind of one twos and touches and making space. But the final the final balls are just pish. So it's okay having the whole, the whole partnership and the kind of the good play, but <clears throat> you've got to have an end game because that helps the team. That creates the chances. There's no point just going up and down the wing, passing the ball back to each other. That's okay, keeping possession. But you want a, you want an end game to that. Yeah, Chris Stokes. Um, uh, well, with Castle and Lustig, well, we talked as I say, we talked about Lustig. You've not really seen. Look, look, I didn't. As I say, I didn't. I saw highlights of Saturday, um, but as I, as I said, I was told with Castle plays well. I'd like to see him get an extended run, perhaps in place of Mag- McGregor, uh, shall we say? And I've, I've already said my piece on Lustig. You know, he he'll make a difference. He's so handsome, he really is. I mean, I, I think you were talking about him last week. He's he's hair. He's, he's a hip. Does he get tattoos? He's got tattoos, don't you, you worry about it. Listen, you, you, I, he, he, I, I still like Berget just on the basis of how he looks, to be honest. I'd still give him a chance. But no, I mean, fun enough. Do you know the two of Berget. them right now? The two of them right now are having some pulled pork burger. Oh. And they're just about to go home to put on some, I don't know, some quality vinyl. Aye. And then, I don't know. Make out. <laughs> make out. <laughs> Inspiration actually, point. <laughs> actually, past Berg getting the game, going to the game. Yeah, you. you stand outside. <laughs> so he was in his tracksuit, going to the game, and I'm um, just having forties and. Was he injured? I don't think so. I don't <laughs> see like he could be ass. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, because uh, okay, so we've got uh, Berg or Berge, what we call him. Uh, well, here's the other point. Uh, Tonev. Um, actually, it was, but my, my, my point is, Berget does. Berget's going to go back to Cardiff, isn't he? Yeah. Probably in January. Keep him, he? They might just let us keep him. Because, <laughs> let's be honest, he, he was pish there. He's been pish generally since he's played for us. And, you know, he talks Norwegian, so it might be company for Johansson and Dyla. But you've, got to, I mean, you've got to kind of wonder Maybe. how how it's not worked, because he, he used to work, he used to play for uh, Dyla under st- uh, Strong God set, so... If Dyla brought him in, what's ha- what he not? What's, what's happened to him that he's not able to fit in his plans? Do you know? See, when Christian was on the podcast last time, he said he's pish, so I've written the guy off. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, he he's the only guy I know that actually has ever seen a Norwegian league game. So <laughs> I'm classing him as an absolute expert, as an expert. 
he said he's pretty ordinary, so nah, cheerio, he can go. I've written him off. Aye, I think he, I think he can go. Uh, Tonev, uh, Celtic, I'll just read out some stuff. Celtic winner Alexander Tonev been banned for seven matches um, for a supposed racial, racial abuse against Shea Long. Celtic came out and said that he's not a racist and the club will and, and the club absolutely adores racism of any kind. This was a very unfortunate case, but the club has accepted Alexander's explanation that he did not say the words that were alleged to have said to him, um, and he's not a racist. We are therefore very disappointed by the outcome today and can confirm that Alexander will be appealing this decision. Thoughts? My thought was, it was a five-hour case, uh, trial. <laughs> what can we talked about for five hours? And it's basically a case of his word against Logan's, and it says... They've actually went with Logan because it probably did happen. I think it was a, a, almost a quote was, they went with Logan because it probably, it probably did happen. <laughs> that's not a way of saying that something that's actually gone and, and convicting someone of it. I, I do, I, I agree with you, but you know when they, you said not a racist, but twice there, I just get an image of that Father Ted sketch when you know he's doing the talk about the... The, the cows being far away? No, no, the... With the, the the Chinese guys, where they get accused of being racist to them, and oh, showing the slideshow, they kept sliding up. Not a racist. oh yeah, that's right. Anyway, found that quite amusing. But what I will say is, I've always been under the I've always been under the assumption that he did do it because I can't see why the guy would have made that up. However, there is no corroborating evidence to that. It is one word, one guy's word against the other. So to ban him for seven matches, essentially because he said that he did it, I I, I don't know how you. You know, I don't know how you can do that. Yeah. Um, it's a difficult one in my head because, if I'm being perfectly honest, I do believe the Aberdeen player in this one because, again, on the, solely on the basis that I don't know why he would make it up. However, if I was on that panel, I couldn't say you're getting punished for this yeah. because there is no corroborating evidence. It's one word against the, uh, the, the other. And you, you, you can't really do him in that. And that's... Well, I mean, it's the thing about Shea, Shea Long. I'm sure... That... I, I I think that Tony, if, again, we don't know for sure, but I don't see what, you know, Shea Long's not, Lo, sorry, Shea Logan's not came out of this, he, he's not won anything, he's not, like, came out of it, you know, a, he's not had a lot of, for example, he's not had a lot of media coverage that has bumped up his profile, he's relatively just got on with things, I don't know why in any way he would want to accuse someone of doing something, you know, being a racist when, you know, they've not been. I, I, again, we're we're all in the same boat. Um, I mean, <laughs> not to be cynical about it, but you know, Tony F hasn't exactly lit the heather alight for us. Yeah. You, you know, if if it was Gudetti that done it, you know, maybe the be the be maybe a different reaction to it. But Tony F to me was always a kind of odd signing for Celtic because. He'd been an absolute flop at Villa. He's placed the burn the lads from from what I know, from what I've seen in clips, you know. I, but you know, he, he just he, he's he's never been given a chance. And when he ha with any sort of small part he has played, he's been anonymous. Um, you know, do we need him? Probably not. But I do think it's kind of unfair just to get rid of him because someone's accused him of racism. Do you know what I mean? But it's at the same time. He probably will go now because he's, he's, we've only got him to January. I was don't say, he'll, he'll go once he's banned from Finches anyway. He's banned from January. Only January. Till, I is think it's only January. January. Yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't know that. I've seen it somewhere. I'll have it. I'll have a look. But I mean, pretty sure it is. Even if it's to the end of the season, I just, I, I don't. It's not like this is the thing about Dyla. I know I'm kind of, kind of flip flopping a little bit, but that's the thing about Dyla. He's brought all those these guys in, and he's just never. He's not given any of them a run in the team. Well, Castle's in and out. Skepovic is in and out. Tony is in and out. The only guys who are getting consistent games are the guys who are actually playing well because they're getting consistent games. You know, you did have a shoot, did have a run at first when he came in. He was ahead of Gadetti, but then when Gadetti started to score a couple of goals, it's kind of fucked round now, and it's Gadetti that's pushed him out of the squad, out of uh, the team. And Gadetti's fitness got up to scratch. I think that that's that's kind of when they brought him in, but he keeps he keeps playing McGregor. <laughs> Do you know he's, know, he's one of the guys who's a consistent run McGregor. He, you'd have to say that. Judging by the amount he's played under Dyla, Dyla sees him as one of the, the most important players in the team. Because as soon as he was fit again, he was right back yeah, in the team. You know, it's, it's the, only, the only problems I know is with, with Dyla is he's brought all these kind of players in and loan. Now, if the majority of them, I think, bar one, is for a full a full season. 
Can he then go and get more players in January? 